Hello again, I'm Paul Beckwith. In the last two videos, I've been talking about the global food supply and how it's being negatively impacted even now by um, accelerating uh, abrupt climate system change. And uh, I'm gonna continue along with examples of how, um, how that's happening uh, from around the world, just to, to cover um, the different uh, the different ways, uh, the different mechanisms, uh, both primary and secondary, that are that are affecting crops. So, so the agri the here's uh, Thailand. The Thailand the agriculture, Thailand agriculture is reeling from drought in a blow to the ailing economies. So, rice, rubber, sugar hurt by worst drought in four decades. Rains forecast to be below normal in first half of wet season. So here we have a river. Uh, which is almost completely dried out. And, uh, you know, they've had to scale back uh, production. Um, and uh, the, the, the rice, sugar, rubber and sugar are among, the, are among the crops that help to sustain 11 million jobs, drive consumption and color the political mood of the rural population. But fam farmers are now grappling with the worst drought in, in four decades. And you know, of course, there's a tourism slump there because of the coronavirus, um, prolonged delay in government budget spending because there's all their money is going towards fighting the coronavirus, and to talk, you know, it leads to recession and uh, tight money supply. All of these economic um, problems that occur. Okay, um, the stalled weather patterns, the jet streams going into ridges and troughs and stalling. The area under, under the ridges, um, it's very warm, dry air. Um, and if you maintain that situation for a long period of time, then you get a drought. And the size of the ridge is uh, the, the area underneath the ridge is becoming much, much larger than it was previously. So it affects far more crop growing regions. Okay, that's a key factor. And I mentioned that um, in a jet stream video before. Uh, Chile's mega drought is rolling on. So three quarters of, um, you know, they were supposed to host the, the uh, COP last year. It was going to be in Santiago, but because of the riots that was moved to Madrid, Spain, um, three quarters of Chile is undergoing severe drought at that time. Um, agricultural, an, an agricultural emergency, and that has continued into into 2020. This was drought the most severe in 60 years, okay, um, in central Chile, in this region here. You know, the uh, at least 10,000 animals died, 50,000 animals are at risk, 2,500 farmers' livelihoods. Um, in Chile, water is mostly in the hands of private companies and they have the right to use it, so farmers aren't getting enough, okay, so you know, no magic solutions. There has to be water for recharging. And, uh, you know, it's, this is a very good, uh, you know, overview of, of, of what's happening there. Okay, India, the agricultural sector faces a looming existential threat from, from climate change. Okay, there's many, many, uh, many, many farmers in India the average income of small farmers is just not enough to feed the people. You know, so when there's, the, when there's uh, massive drought and food shortages and there's no food for, it's not just for the farmers, but for the rural areas. And, uh, you know, this becomes a huge, huge problem. Okay, so, um, the, so the economy is, is devastated. Um, Alberta, here's an article from um, Alberta Farmer. Like it or not, climate change will change your farm. The growing season's already longer. Extremes are more common. Okay, uh, there's a lot more hailstorms. So here's David Phillips um, with Environment Canada talking about, you know, normal isn't occurring anymore. He was a bit of a, um, it took him a long time to come around to accept the risks from climate change. You know, he, he, he'd, uh, it, it took him an awful long time, but he's pretty much got there now so problems in you know any farm producing region around the world kansas lawmakers can deny climate change but that won't stop the extreme flooding okay so um you know we're getting all kinds of extremes for drought all kinds of extremes for torrential rains leading to 
to flooding. Um, spring frost losses and climate change, not a contradiction in terms. Okay, so a few years ago in Europe, there was a there was an exceptionally warm spring. All the buds came out, um, and then there was a there was a killing frost, a series of overnight frosts, three point three billion dollars economic losses. Only about a fifth of that was insured. Okay, just a few years ago, um, same thing in Ontario. Huge crop losses, uh, huge apple losses because the spring was extremely warm and then there was a killing frost um, and that that took out all of the all of the buds um, drought isn't the only obstacle you know this this article talks about olive oil producers and um, you know how the uh, you know the, the the drying and the drought and the temperature rises are completely um, decreasing yields of you know high value uh, crops uh, such as uh, you know the olive trees that make the olive oil. Farmers reeling in aftermath of the most terrifying firestorm they've witnessed. So now we can talk about the US and the fires or we can talk about the Australian fires and huge numbers of hectares of farmland burnt down. Okay the ash and the contaminants from the fire can then travel onto other crops and make them inedible in you know unable to eat them spoil them including sort of like for example grapes hundreds of kilometers away and the uh you know the animals don't have enough feed the cattle and so on i mean there's all of these different spin-off effects so these are the fires in in uh, australia in california also the fires in australia the pollutants from wildfires affect crop and vegetation growth hundreds of kilometers from the impact zone. Okay, um, okay. so it's not just the areas of crops that are destroyed by the fires, but it's the pollutants from the fires, um, the, ozone from the, the ozone and aerosols, two byproduct pollutants of wildfires, they, they can negatively affect uh, plant growth in areas that are seemingly unaffected by the natural disaster. Significant reduction in plant productivity in areas far away from the fire's borders, okay? So um, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, spin-off effects of these fires. It's not just the areas that burn down. No vintage. Australian vineyards dump the grape harvest as bushfire smoke takes its toll. The entire 2020 crop was lost in some parts of these famous Australian wine growing regions, many growers have picked only a small fraction of their, of their fruit because the contaminants from this fire, of course, it gets into the grapes in the, in the vineyard and, uh, you know, try to make wine from those grapes and it just tastes horrible. Okay, so they, they don't even bother picking the grapes. Um, the infrastructure, the, uh, there's log jams that are caused here. So Brazil is the largest, world's biggest soybean producer and exporter. The wild weather left a vessel log jam at ports and caused harvest delays. So heavy rain, not only did it crimp the crop collection, jammed up vessels in the ports and, uh, you know, a huge queue of vessels and, uh, you know, the whole transportation system is thrown in, in um, confusion. Uh, of course, uh, large storms um, have devastating blows to the farm economies. You know, this isn't the U.S. affecting the uh, storage, the grain elevators, the storage elevators being, being flooded out and collapsing. Hotter climate altering the cold chain, okay? Uh, because, uh, you know, if the temperatures are, uh, depending on the temperatures and the amount of rainfall, some of the, if it's warmer than usual weather at harvest means that fruit is ripening rapidly. And, and uh, you know, when it, it, it looks like it's riper, it's changing color, but on the inside, it might not be, um, it might not be correct. So the, the fruit cycle uh, doesn't develop properly. And then, um, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, maybe picked when it looks ripe, but it's not, and, or it's overripe because of the heat, et cetera. Um, Here's some financial implications of the um, extreme weather on U.S. the farm economy. Okay, farmers, uh, if they, they don't make money for many years, they have to get huge loans. That migrant caravan that Trump was talking about years ago, 
You know, violence and poverty have been cited as the reason for the exodus, but the big picture is that farmers were forced off their land by drought. They had no jobs, no money, and they needed food, so they formed these caravans that went up towards the U.S. It's a climate change caused uh, situation. Suicides of nearly 60,000 Indian farmers linked to climate change. This was from an article about three years ago, but this is ongoing. And I, as I mentioned previously, just last week, there were over 200 million uh, people out on a general strike, many of them farmers in India. This was 200,000 people in India for a general labor strike. Nigeria offers a terrifying vision of a future affected by climate change. Okay, uh, you know, violent deaths in Nigeria, while they've been presented as an ethno-religious conflict, both domestic and international, um, including U.S. President Trump, such an analysis oversimplifies a complex crisis. The root cause is they can't grow food and they can't feed themselves. Okay, so climate is uh, causing, climate disruption is causing all of these things. Bomb cyclones and bread baskets, so climate, food, and political unrest intersect, okay? There's all of these different articles on these sort of uh, topics as well. This is from the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, okay? And uh, it does talk, here it talks about the Arab Spring, okay? The, the terrible drought and heat waves in Russia, Okay, one of the breadbaskets of the world, no exports that year, food shocks in the Middle East and Africa, and the situation exploded like a powder keg. Climate change is hurting the farmers, even seeds are under threat. So when you have stressed crops, you have stressed seeds, when you have stressed seeds, they don't uh, have high yields um, and produce healthy crops in the following year. So there's a spin-on effect from that. Um, here's some uh, farming in BC, strawberry farmers. Um, they used to pump for irrigation, but the water's getting too salty to use. Um, and, uh, you know, the yields of the strawberries in, the, in, in Delta, um, British Columbia, uh, was horrible. Food and water security, you know, Pacific Islands. Um, you know, here's a case study on Vanuata, okay? Um, agriculture has allowed people there to have access to food, but the food production is threatened by exposure to natural disasters. Climate change is intensifying these effects. Poor water management. A Lar large part of the population is, is in, involved in sub subsistence agriculture, you know, and with their own food security threatened, they have to import stuff. So lots of the, you know, it's a poor country, lots of the money has to come in just to pay food. Climate change is causing mass extinction of bumblebees. And uh, of course, they're a very important pollinator that we need. Um, the decade long drought in Chile wiped out hives and bees are left without flowers. Okay, another threat to the pollinators. The locusts, okay, climate change. Um, we're getting some unusual storms that leave a lot of water on the surface of the, of the land near the coast, perfect breeding ground for locusts, then the locusts get on the move and they consume huge amounts of, of, um, of crops. So it's not just in, Austri in India, um, it's, uh, you know, people are aware of the intensity and scale of the bushfires, but, uh, you know, the hordes of locusts destroyed far more crops even than them, and most people weren't aware of, of that. Spain, uh, two-thirds of the country is vulnerable to desertification, okay, and therefore, you know, the crop growing is threatened. In the mountains, climate change, of course, is disrupting everything, and there's lots of farms on the mountain slopes. This is in the Andes. Um, Midwest farmers fear spring will bring more widespread flooding. Here's the grain bins bursting and the grain coming out, okay, from flooding in the Midwest. And again, there we've had weather whiplashing. Okay, wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry. Drought plunged Europe's farmers into despair. Okay, um, massive drought um, as the, you know, the heat waves in Europe uh, worsen. So are we getting, I guess the question is, are we getting to this sort of Soylent Green situation? 
you know, look at the, uh, there's a good video on a header for the movie, which I won't show you, but I recommend you play it.